everybody in this video we're going to pick up where we left off so if you didn't watch part one of kubernetes and platform engineering series highly highly recommend you watch it why because in this video we're going to be talking about cluster api and believe it or not the back end of cluster api which you're going to see actually uses cube builder and controllers and crds in the overall operator model to get the cluster api infrastructure providers up and running and used correctly so again if you haven't watched it definitely check it out but in this video let's dive into cluster api now what is cluster api well it's a declarative way to manage your kubernetes clusters what the heck does that mean that means managing kubernetes with kubernetes now we're kind of seeing this a lot pop up here and we're definitely seeing it with projects like crossplane so you're able to you know manage other resources and kubernetes with kubernetes and cluster api is doing something very similar so let's say you have a kubernetes cluster running in azure or aws or on-prem or wherever we're going to talk about all the providers and you know what's ultimately supported coming up but let's say you're running in azure for example and you have aks well what you can do is you can use your Kubernetes cluster to generate YAML to create a new Kubernetes cluster. So you can actually create an entire Kubernetes cluster with YAML in this declarative fashion, and you're doing it all utilizing your existing Kubernetes cluster. So this dives really deep into the whole idea of platform engineering. Instead of a developer or an engineer having to know the ins and outs of creating a Kubernetes cluster what code to write, how to manage it, etc. They can simply and literally just run a few commands and they have a Kubernetes cluster up and running and it's managed with Kubernetes. So Kubernetes then becomes the platform for platform engineering for all of the management for everything outside of your cluster. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into a couple of web pages. We're going to talk about it a little bit, and then we're going to dive into the code and see how this whole thing works. All right, so first things first, I want to show the provider implementations. Now, there are a few different providers, and same thing with Cube Builder. This topic, I mean, this is the Cluster API book, and as you can see, it's huge. I mean, there's a lot of information here, so we're definitely not going to get through everything, and I highly recommend you taking a look at this. But what I do want to showcase here are there are a few different providers. Now, first things first, there are the bootstrap providers. Now, what are the bootstrap providers? Well, when the infrastructure providers, which we'll talk about in a second, create the cluster and create the VMs and all that good stuff, you need a way to get Kubernetes installed. And that way is with the bootstrap provider. So you, so you can see here you have KubeADM, MicroKDS, Talos, and then you have some Oracle stuff and some Amazon stuff as well for EKS. And then you have the control plane, which again, this is the provider to get your control plane up and running, and we're going to be using KubeADM. That's what I would say a fair amount of the providers use. Now, the infrastructure providers. The infrastructure providers are essentially the vendors that are supporting cluster API. So AWS, Azure, you have DigitalOcean here, you have GCP, you have Kubevert, which is really cool. You have OpenStack, you have a bunch of different things, even vSphere. So if you're running ESXi environments, you can run this in your ESXi environment. So as you can see here, these providers are all created by vendors. Now, I want to showcase a little bit of how a provider is ultimately created. Chances are you're not going to create your own provider unless you work specifically for a vendor like this. And you may, you may work for a vendor and you may create it, but from a general like DevOps engineer, platform engineer, SRE perspective, you probably won't create your own. But here's the thing, you actually pretty much already know how to create your own. And why do I say that? Well, again, talking about part one of this series, the back end of creating a cluster API or CAPI infrastructure provider is using Cube Builder. So check this out. This is a really, really cool tutorial here that you can dive into when creating a cluster API provider. But it goes through the prereqs and all that good stuff. But notice here how Cube Builder is one of the prereqs. Now, when you set up the scaffolding, right, to create that initial template, check this out. It's literally using. Cube Builder. 
So when you're creating a cluster API provider, it's literally using Cube Builder on the back end, which you learned how to do in part one of this series. So you're, you know, 50, 60% of the way there. And then everything else, like for example, implementing the cluster controller, this is going into implementing controllers and CRDs and the APIs and all the stuff that we talked about in part one using Cube Builders. So cluster API is actually using Cube Builder on the back end, which is really, really cool. So again, you're 50, 60% of the way there if you watched part one of this tutorial. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is utilizing cluster API. Now, chances are, again, if you're not creating a provider, you're going to be a user of cluster API. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that you're going to be using and deploying Kubernetes clusters with cluster API, which we're going to be diving into in this video. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, notice here, if we scroll up, you're going to have a few different things you have to do. You have to have some prerequisites. You have to install and configure a Kubernetes cluster. Why? Because again, cluster API, you're using Kubernetes to manage Kubernetes. So you have to have a Kubernetes cluster present. And then scrolling down here, you know, it shows you if you want to create your own um, local cluster here, uh, installing cluster CTL, all that good stuff. And then as you scroll down, you're going to notice here how there's an implementation method for all these different vendors. And it's going to be different for all the vendors. So for example, in AWS, Notice here how it needs a couple of environment variables, the access key ID, secret, et cetera, to connect to AWS. Then with Azure, same thing, but a little bit different. It needs a tenant ID, it needs a client ID, it needs a client secret, et cetera. And then it creates this Kubernetes secret on your existing cluster. And then that's how you can manage Kubernetes with Kubernetes in whatever vendor you're using. Let's dive into the code here. Okay, now first things first, I just wanna show I do have a Kubernetes cluster running in AKS. Now, why did I choose Azure for this? Ah, I had the code up, I had the cluster running, figured it made sense. Now, why do I say that? Because cluster API, regardless of what you're using, whether it's Azure, whether it's AWS, whether it's on-prem, how you're using it is all the same. It's just the initialization for the providers is gonna be different. So again, Azure is gonna ask for the Azure tenant ID and client ID and client secret. AWS is going to ask for things like the AWS key ID, secret access key, et cetera. So the initialization is going to be different, but how you actually utilize it and how you actually deploy clusters from a declarative fashion, from a YAML fashion, it's going to be the same thing. All right. So if you're not using AKS, totally fine. You can still follow along with this and you can just, you know, utilize your own provider or your own cloud rather, or, you know, on-prem or whatever. Okay. So now let's move into the code, right? Now, first things first, you're going to have to install cluster API. Now this is going to be the same for whatever cloud you are utilizing. Okay. Next, after that, you're going to have to set up those environment variables. So notice here how I have the Azure subscription ID, the tenant ID, client ID, client secret, etc. And then down here, I'm essentially creating these variables out of that information. And then I'm creating a secret. Now, once I create that secret, I'm initializing cluster API to use Azure. So let's go ahead and run all this. All right, now moment of truth here. Let's initialize our provider. All righty, and we can now see here that it brought down the kubeadm for the bootstrapping, the kubeadm for control plane, and then the infrastructure Azure for the Azure provider. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to generate a cluster. Now, what does that mean? We're going to spin up some YAML and we are going to utilize that to get the cluster up and running, right? So now first things first, I just want to ensure that I'm in a proper directory here. So I'm going to say MKDIR Azure Cappy cd azure cap okay now the reason why i'm doing that is because i am generating some code here so i want it to be in the right location right. now what i'm going to do here is i am going to set some environment variables for how i want my vms to look my vms that are running kubernetes right so i'm going to say that i want the vms in east us i'm going to use the standard d2s type for the control plane and for the worker nodes and then this is the resource group that i want it in all right, so let me go ahead and copy that, run this. And then I'm going to generate my code here. 
Now, again, when I'm, whether I'm using Azure, AWS, OpenStack, doesn't matter. This command is going to be the same. This is going to be different, of course, because, you know, we want it to represent whatever we're running. So if we were running an AWS, it would be AWS here. Okay. That's just a metadata name. And then I'm specifying my Kubernetes version, which this is coming from kubeadm. So because I'm using kubeadm as a bootstrapper, I'm specifying my Kubernetes version. And then I'm outputting the YAML here, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. All right, boom. So now if I go ahead and I open this up, check it out. This is now my YAML configuration to deploy my Kubernetes cluster. And this is gonna be running on a few different VMs inside of Azure. So now let's go ahead and actually see this thing run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run kubectl apply minus F against that YAML configuration. So again, which is really, this is really, really cool. I, I don't know, I think this is awesome because I'm literally using kubectl commands. I'm literally using Kubernetes to manage and deploy Kubernetes. <laughs> so I just, I don't know, I think that's cool. All right, and as we can see here, that was all done. kubectl get ns. Let's go ahead and run kubectl get all namespace cappy system. Okay, and we can now see the manager and the webhook and all that good stuff up and running. Now, if I run kubectl, you get cluster notice here how i can even see that that is now being provisioned now that can of course take a little bit of time because again it's running you know a bunch of vms and networks and security groups and all that good stuff it's doing a bunch of stuff on the back end so it could take a little bit now once that cluster is up and running you're going to connect to it so you just run kubect or i'm sorry cluster ctl get cube config and then you grab that cube config next you set up the cube config for the cloud provider okay so what this is going to essentially do is this is going to set azure as the cloud provider for your controller manager so you have controller managers in general and then you have cloud controller managers and because we're running this in azure we want to use that cloud controller manager and then last but certainly not least you can set up your CNI or your container network interface for all of your local networking. And this is an example here to utilize Calico. And with that, that is how you can get up and running right now from a platform engineering perspective with Cluster API. Thank you so much for watching.